this is a in development doll called Blockhead, and it's super out there and experimental. And the first time I tried this, I had no idea what I was doing because it's one of the most confusing interfaces to use. But that in itself is its strength. So before really explaining it, I think it's best to just show you. And this is like a quick little song that I made inside of Blockhead on my first day messing around with it. And it's definitely something I would have never made in any other doll, and I'll explain why. So to show you how it really works, I'm just going to start a brand new project. And you are welcomed with this just empty space. First thing you got to do is add a track. And you're just kind of like, uh, where's the grid? What am I doing? This looks so different than what I'm used to. But it'll all make sense in a second when I bring in this quick little splice sample. Let's see, I'll bring in this kick, right? So you bring in a kick, and if you have a track, you can just drop it in, and it's free. There's literally no grid. Kind of like grid. I could probably very easily just copy it, paste it paste it, paste it. And this is really weird, but for some reason, the developer, which is just one person, um, decided that tab is the best way to play. So the first thing you'll notice is there's no grid, and we'll get to that in a second. But first, I want to show you what's cool about Blockhead. Everything's divided into these little blocks, and when you double-click these blocks, you have control. So it's not your traditional sort of uh, audio clip where you can just gain it or lower it maybe like you could in Pro Tools or something else, you have a bunch of different things here. You have your amp, which is your kind of attack, decay, release, all that stuff. For example, if I wanted this to be a really short kick, I could do that. And I could also pitch it just straight in here. And you'll see that in real time, it's changing the waveform. And that waveform is an accurate representation of what you're seeing. So it's, it's all very destructive. It's not something that you can just bypass and then you're back to your original thing. Everything that you're doing here is definitely going to stay on whatever clip you do it. But it's every individual clip has the ability to kind of do its own thing, you know? So I'm going to make this one like a really high pitched, like. I have these things now and you're like, okay, cool. Well, that's interesting. And again, I think it's really cool that it's drawing that in real time so you can kind of see what you're doing. And now you're like, I have somewhat of a groove. So the next thing I would maybe want to do if I was building something is add some kind of effect. In a traditional DAW, you have a track and you have inserts and you throw in whatever plugin you want into that insert. In this case, it works a little different. Um, you add a lane to that track. So it's almost like layers, you're stacking stuff. And I like to think of this, it's very much still like signal flow. The top layer falls onto the next and then so on and so forth. So if I wanted to add a, for example, a delay, you'll see that I get this little region and you'll see it in real time drawing wherever I put it. So here's a really cool thing. If I want it to just be on that kick, you just draw it right there. And again, if I double click into here, there's no icon yet, very much work in progress, like I said, but you have all your controls here for the delay. And so now I can really play with it. And again, I can just copy it, paste it, and and do that. And now I can maybe change this one, I can change the feedback. And so you can already start seeing there's some cool potential here for what you could do that you normally wouldn't be able to do. And if I added another lane even, I would add, a, let's just say, a ring modulator, I guess. I could now put that here. And I could put that here. I double click it and here looks like I can affect the pitch. So, so I could do, and we already have something kind of cool. And again, now what's interesting is if I were to, if I were to copy that and put it under the one that's with delay, it's going to ring modulate the delay as well. And there we have a really quirky, weird groove with just a kick. Mind you, I haven't done anything in terms of like opening a VST or anything. This is all just manipulating samples. And so so you can already quickly see that if you start building out a song like this, you have what seems like infinite control to really get in there and tweak the sound design. And so one of the weird features that Blockhead has intentionally is that there is no 
predefined grid when you first get in. They want you to be able to just play around and kind of make this this weird playground where you don't necessarily have to follow any rules. But naturally, eventually you will, and they have an ability to do that. And so you add another lane and you can add a tempo guide. And the way the tempo guide works is you drag it and make sure that you have that. And so if we want one bar to be the first four beats, it tells you we're at 84 beats and now it will define a grid for you. And so something really crazy, if you think about this implication is if I wanted to, I could bring a kick over here. And if I, if I really wanted to, I could completely ignore the grid for example, and then I could add another lane and I could add another tempo guide and I could, <laughs> I could essentially have two different tempos, which is insane, for example. And now you really start saying like, oh, this is kind of crazy. And so now, you know, I'm building a song here. I have, and it, it gets a little tricky if you're going to do two tempos because it doesn't know where to snap, but you get the the implication here is that now I could do something that's at a slightly different tempo and you've got some really wacky sort of things happening here. It actually surprisingly kind of works. So let's just keep building on that. So there I've got a tempo that's 84 on top and a tempo that's 87. Normally I'd be like, why would you want to do that? In this case, it's just kind of fun. I probably won't go too far into that, but let's see what else you can do. We'll add another track. And in this track, we're going to add a synth. Again, here you would normally expect that when I open this synth, you're going to get some kind of VST that opens here. But instead, you get just a solid waveform. Let's solo it so we can just hear that. And again, it's drawing that waveform in real time. And if we double click it, we get this funny little mouth cartoon. But here we go. We can kind of like mess with the pitch. You know, obviously, if I wanted to make that musical, I'd have to really sit in there and tweak it. This can very quickly become nightmare fuel, obviously. So I'm just going to try to instead do something really simple. Let's find a cool pitch. And again, this is probably meant for experimental music more than anything. And I'm trying to follow the top grid for this one. I'm just going to mess with this and do some really wacky stuff. And so you'll see the grid kind of struggles a little bit to make sure that you're doing the right thing in terms of like where you want it to place. So extremely wacky sort of song that I just made, obviously. Let's throw in a spring reverb. Again, whatever I do over here, you can see it in real time. And so let's bring down that mix way down. And again, if I just copy this over, it's not copying the actual clip, it's showing me in real time. So you'll notice it's slightly gonna be different if this was different. And again, I can just go in here and like, let's just say I wanted to make the size go from small to big. It's gonna change. I'm going to show you some of the other features that are super cool. Um, first one being this super weird thing called the carnival. And again, blank space. You just double click and you have this really weird kind of thing. And you can just kind of combine them. If I double click, I get something else. It's very bizarre. You can randomize it. Don't ask me to try to make sense of this because it makes no sense to me. And so obviously here you're like, okay, what am I ever going to do with that? Like, I don't know what you want me to do with that. I mean, you can probably generate some cool sounds, but how do I use this? And to answer that question, we have to talk about how you input things into Blockhead when you're not just importing a sample. And of course, they can't just do it simple because that's not what this program is about. It's not just a record button and you start recording. The fact is that Blockhead is always recording. And so everything you have been doing 
it records. And so in this case, when I was playing with the with the carnival, it recorded all of that. And I kind of like this, let's see. And so if I like that, I can just double click it and bring it in to a new track. Well, I think I put it in, the, in a different lane, which is fine, but let's lower that way down. Well, first we can just go into the amp, bring it down. And of course, the same way I was manipulating everything else, I can manipulate this in real time. And so that also works for your actual input. Like you can just go over here and add plus and you can add, like you can see it's picking up my MacBook microphone here and anything I say or do, it'll record um, within a certain threshold that you can set. Um, and that obviously, if you have a guitar plugged in, for example, you could just be playing along and you would have something that would be in grid and you just highlight it and drop it in. So you can already start seeing the possibilities of using something like Blockhead and it's just such a unique way to record music that obviously if you wanted to make a traditional song, this would not be the doll to use. But this really does remind me a lot of what makes something like the OP1 so charming. It's like you dive into those settings and you have no idea what's going on, truly. But that's the charm and that's what makes you create stuff that you would normally never create. And I think that's what Blockhead is going for. It's trying to just be this very open-ended playground for sound design and to create stuff. And the cool thing is like, you could always just go in here, create like this crazy loop, export it, and then take it to your regular DAW and start working on a song there. I think this is super, super cool. And I'm really excited to see where it goes. Like I, you can see right there, the version number, it's V0.41. Like this is nowhere near complete. And there's probably so many more features. I know they're adding some MIDI implementation and all that stuff, but I didn't even want to dive into that because the thing that makes this special right now is the features that I talked about. Um, so this is not a sponsored thing. I just stumbled upon this on uh, YouTube a while back and I've been following it closely. And with some of these recent updates, I really wanted to make a video and I'm sure that eventually I'll make a much more in-depth video. So if you do like this video, let me know in the comments if you'd like for me to explain more of it. But for now, just wanted to do a simple, simple dive into the program. If you want to try it for yourself, I think you can uh, get it for $1 on Patreon. You just have to subscribe to be a supporter on Patreon. You could literally just do a month and then cancel, and you'd have access to this version at least. Um, but uh, the developer, Kalugo, I believe it's pronounced, he's been working on this for, I think, like three years and just barely started releasing it into the public via Patreon. So uh, I'll leave you with another little track that I had made. I'm not going to save this one because it's just way too wacky. But this is the first track that I had made. And um, that's it. Yeah, if you like it, thanks for watching. This is more of a chill video than usual. But go ahead and subscribe if you haven't. I have all sorts of different videos, videos like this, stuff that's a little bit more video essay. -y. But anyways, thanks for watching. And I hope you check out Blockhead and try some weird stuff with it. All right, that's it.